In this video, we're going to be creating the viral 3D carousel effect by Kinu Visuals. Let's check it out. All right, so once you guys are in DaVinci, you're going to want to go ahead and grab a Fusion Comp, essentially like all my other videos. The next thing that you're going to want to do is switch this timeline to vertical resolution because we're trying to make you go viral on Instagram or TikTok. All right, now let's jump into the Fusion page. So click on this guy, open in Fusion page, and grab a background node. We're going to connect this to the media out, and we're going to bring the alpha value all the way down next you're going to need some instagram footage or tiktoks or whatever photos you want to actually be a part of the carousel you're going to need to bring those into da vinci i got them right here so i'm going to select this one i'm going to hit shift on the bottom one and i'm going to bring them on into the viewer all right now that we got them in the node layout we're going to go ahead and delete all these merges because we don't need them if you want you can go ahead and rename all your stuff with f2 we don't need to we just have six different videos we're just going to work with what we got and now we're going to bring in an image plane for this first guy here go ahead and connect your median one to your first image planes green input and now we're just going to move everything over so we have a bit more space so i'm going to grab onto this and we're going to grab a merge 3d node connect your image plane 3d to your merge 3d then we're going to need a renderer if you've never done 3d in DaVinci you're gonna need these nodes so make sure you have all three of these and connect your images or videos to the image plane followed by a merge followed by a renderer all right so now that that's out of the way we're gonna connect our renderer to the background and we're all set right here we have it linked up with our footage so the next thing i want you to do is go into your renderer and select the renderer type and make it hardware this is just going to make it so your computer doesn't explode when we're working on this so make sure you do that and now what we're going to do is we're going to move this back a little bit and i'm going to click on our image plane 3d anytime i bring in a node here we're going to hit shift space Space bar and I'm gonna grab a transform 3d node all right so the next thing you might be wondering hey Rob how are you so cool how do you have this fusion layout structure here well let me show you you come up to workspace you go down and you find where it says layout presets you go to fusion presets and you go to mid flow and then you can be as cool as me <laughs> You got the mid flow set up. All right, so now let's get on to the video. All right, so you're gonna want to go ahead and copy the image plane and the transform down to your other node. So I'm gonna hit Control C and I'm gonna hit Control Shift V. This is going to create some instance nodes. If you've never used these before, this is just gonna make it so if we change something in any one of these guys, it's also going to change on the top one as well so now that we got that let me just reset it it essentially just connects your two nodes together and now we can connect this video to our instance um, image plane and I want to just line everything up too so let me just move this back and we won't go any further just yet I want to make sure that this all fits on the screen exactly how I want so I'm gonna grab this first media in node I'm gonna grab a rectangle mask I'm going to expand the width and expand the height all the way and change the corner radius I'm just going to bring the median one up on the screen it's gonna make it a lot easier to actually adjust this and that's too much so we're gonna even bring it down even more maybe something like that where it just barely cuts off the corners and it's almost in a phone shape all right so cool now what we're gonna do is I'm going Going to connect this to our merge our instance transform and I'm going to just disable this guy for right now so that way we can see what we're doing on this first one I'm going to bring up the merge 3d on our second viewer and now I'm just going to adjust this in the screen all right the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring our renderer up in the second viewer 
and I'm just going to adjust this to the size that we want it on the screen. So how I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to bring in a standard transform node in front of our median one and I'm going to bring down the size to maybe about something like 0.5. All right. You'll have to get this to your taste to each their own for each different video, but today we're using 0.5 for the size. And you're gonna actually bring this transform node down exact same way we did for these instances and attach them to all these media in notes. So I'm gonna hit Control C, I'm gonna hit Control Shift V, and then I'm just gonna do that all the way down. See, this is fine to do with the transform node right here, but for these guys, we've got some changes to make and we're gonna be de-instancing some things, which means disconnecting the values from the top one. So it just doesn't make sense to do that yet, but we'll get there. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to actually come into our next one and I'm just going to enable this so it starts to get on the screen. So enable your nodes. And now what we're gonna do, we're going to bring the merge in the second viewer. And now we have two different things. I'm going to bring this rectangle mask out to the side. I'm gonna actually connect this rectangle mask to all of our media in nodes. So that way they have all the same mask. And yeah, I actually just learned this recently in DaVinci Resolve. If you add in a bunch of extra nodes, for example, this rectangle mask, it actually is gonna slow down your computer more. So if you know that they're gonna be using the same mask, just go ahead and attach the same mask to all the different inputs for each media in node. It's going to save you a lot of processing power. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come into the second instance transform that we got going on. I'm going to de-instance a couple things. So I'm going to de-instance essentially everything in here besides the scale. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come down to the Y rotation. We have six different videos. There's 360 degrees in a circle. So if you do the math on a calculator, 360 divided by six, 60 degrees per element, so per video. And if you were doing more, you divide 360 by seven, by five, if there's less. Whatever number you have of video. All right, so we're gonna need 60 degrees for each of these. All right, so we're gonna come into the instance transform. We're gonna set the Y rotation value to 60. And now what we're gonna do is they're on top of each other. So what we need to do is we need to change the Z pivot. So I'm gonna change the Z pivot till it gets to a point where I can clearly see that they're separated. You can create however much distance you want. We can change this in the future. You'll see later. But we'll leave something like that for right now. And now I'm going to copy these nodes again. I'm going to hit Control Shift V and we're going to connect this to our instance node. So now I'm gonna come into our transform again. I'm going to de-instance the rotate group. I'm going to de-instance the pivot. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into this Y rotation value. I'm going to add 60 to our 60 right here. It's gonna become 120. That's what happens when you add 60 to 60. Comes 120. And, but now our images are on top of one another or our video. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hold control on my keyboard. I'm gonna click on our instance, our second instance transform. And just so that's brought up in the viewer, I'm going to pin the top guy and we're this is the bottom instance this is this one right here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the z pivot and i'm going to type in equals then hit enter that's going to allow us to grab the pick whip here so i'm just going to hover over the one that we're going to connect this to which is the top one and connect it to the z value that we got here all right so now once you have the z pivot value connected to each other you can go ahead and grab this node and connect it to the merge and and now you should be able to see it on the screen. Now we're gonna do the very same thing with this one. So I'm going to grab these two nodes and hit Control C, Control Shift V, drag them over, connect this to the instance, jump on in here to the transform, D instance rotate group, D instance pivot group. But now we're going to select the one above it. So I'm gonna come in here and also you're gonna to wanna to disconnect this pin. So I'm gonna reselect these. Select this one first and then select the top one and now delete what's in here 
Control A, delete, grab the pick whip, attach it to this top one until it opens up and select the Z value. So now we got something similar. Now we just need to add another 60 degrees to the Y rotation. So I'll add in 60 degrees, which is gonna give us 180. We're gonna do the same thing, connect it to the Merge 3D. You should see it right here. And we're gonna do the same thing throughout. All right, so now that we got them all connected, there might be a couple different questions that you might ask. Is there a way that we can pull these closer together? Is there a way to bring these farther apart? Yes, and I will answer that in a sec. It's actually super simple once you have this whole layout put together. I'm also gonna answer another question. Maybe you want things to start on different frame and you don't want these videos to start right away. How would I do that? We're gonna get to that into that in a sec. All right, so let's start off with how to get these closer together. So if you want these to be closer together, you need to find the first instance transform before the one that you actually connected through expression. So it's this guy right here. It is the second instance transform. In order to make these more together or farther apart, you simply come over here and you just change the value. You can change it in closer to zero to make them come closer together, or you can make it farther away from zero to make it farther apart. All right, so for now, let's go with that. But maybe you also want these to start at different times. In order to get these videos to start at different times, you can come into the median for any particular video, let's say this first one, and we can have it hold the first frame out for as many frames as we want. If we want it to start on frame 30, we can type in 30 here. If you want to have it start at a different part of your clip, you can trim the clip. So watch this. It's not going to play till frame 30. Now it starts playing. Cool, right? And you can do that for all of these clips. You can have them start at their own individual times, whatever you want. All right, so now what you actually came here for, how do we rotate the carousel? Okay, in order to rotate these videos around, you're gonna wanna come into the merge and we're gonna do something similar to all the transforms that we've used. We're gonna take the pivot value in here because if we just rotate the Y, it rotates, but not how we want it to. So we're going to take the Z pivot and we're going to hit equals, hit enter, and we're going to hit control on this instance, transform the last one and come up and we're going to pick whip it to the Z pivot of the transform. Then come back into your merge and now try adjusting your Y. It actually rotates how you want. Isn't that perfect? But we can take this a step further. We're going to come on the zeroth frame I'm going to set a keyframe. I'm going to come to around frame 30. And we said 60 degrees is to our next video. So every 60 degrees is to your next video. So we'll go to the next one. And we're going to have this hold for about 40 frames. So I'll set a keyframe on frame 70. And then in another 30 frames, we're going to have it rotate again. All right. So let's add 60 to this. It's going to give us 120 be a little sneak peek. And now we're going to have it sit for another 40 frames. So keyframe the 40th frame, don't change anything. And then we'll bring it to the end and we'll just keep spinning this thing like crazy. All right, so now we created an animation. Let's check out what we got. It stops for a little bit and then it spins like crazy. All right, so to me, it was too linear, and that's because it is linear. So I want to ease our keyframes. So click on the merge, click this zoom to fit, make sure you have show only selected and just your Y rotation selected. And now we're going to just grab this first guy right here and we're gonna hit S on our keyboard. You can even grab these little ends here, hold Alt and you can bring them in. You can adjust the ease in, ease out value. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the other values. You can't really see them because they're kind of small. So you need to hold control and zoom in. It was this first guy, we'll smooth that out and we'll leave one as is without the adjusted handles. Then we're going to skip this little section here because that's supposed to be linear. Linear. Then we're going to grab this guy. This is supposed to be smoothed out. So we'll select that, hit S on our keyboard, and now we will zoom in. And you can actually hit T on your keyboard and adjust the ease in and out value that way. So let's check out something like this. A lot 
lot smoother. All right, so that's how to do the viral 3D carousel effect by Kinu Visuals. If you guys love this one, you're gonna love the particle explosion effect that I did for Devin Jaho video. Go check that out. I'll link it either over here or over here. Check that out next.